If you even have a passing interest in using your voice or flailing your body around in front of a motion sensor to make your lights come on, then I have something super exciting to show you today. If you've clicked on this video, it's either because you already know what Home Assistant is, or you just like seeing total strangers on the internet being wrong. We're all here because you're wrong, idiot. But either way, Home Assistant is the only way that you can ensure that your system stays working, even if the smart home industry goes bust tomorrow. Here's Paul from the past to explain. In simple terms, Home Assistant is a way to get your Philips Hue stuff to respond when your IKEA stuff does something, for example. You can get stuff to talk to each other without using the internet, too. So if you've heard of If This Then That, that's the same thing, but you're reliant on somebody else's server on the internet. If you buy yourself a Raspberry Pi and install Home Assistant on it, then you're not reliant on anybody. Home Assistant is about taking back control of your smart home from the evil mega corporations not enough yats, so that they can't decide for you what devices can and can't talk to each other. It's about putting all your devices into one app on your phone, even if they were bought from different companies. And it's about making everything work locally so that even if your internet connection is down, or the smart home company that sold you the product goes bust, it will continue working. But most importantly, most importantly of all, it's about waving your d around in the faces of people that don't have Home Assistant. HOME ASSISTANT! And I'm making this video today in response to some of the comments I got on a video I made about a month ago. I made the ultimate smart home alarm system using the Toya Smart Life platform. And this had two sirens, a whole bunch of lights, and loads of stuff going on, and the majority of it worked locally without an internet connection because it used the Toya Smart Life bridge. And the typical response, as usual, was this. Paul, have I got a Home Assistant? You should have tried Home Assistant. If you had Home Assistant, you wouldn't have this problem. Home Assistant, Home Assistant, Home Assistant, Home Assistant. Now, most of you were quite polite in telling me that I need to try Home Assistant again. But some of you were a little bit more like, Home Assistant, let Paul hit me. Home Assistant, for God's sake, Home Assistant. Try Home Assistant again, why are you? Try Home Assistant again, for God's sake. Try Home Assistant again. Having thoroughly enjoyed Home Assistant only six months previous, I had very little faith that I was actually going to be able to create exactly the same alarm system again within the Home Assistant platform. Things can very quickly become extremely difficult, and the only people that can help you are God's sake, Home Assistant! But I've now discovered two things that entirely eradicate both of those problems, and it makes Home Assistant now my favorite smart home platform. from our sponsor, Manscaped. Red's note here is concerned that using a traditional trimmer will turn his undercarriage into some sort of road traffic accident. And rightly so. We've all experienced the bitter, searing pain of using an electric shaver from a competing brand. But how will you make the ladies like you if you're not like me and don't have a gentleman's hedge that's been strimmed to perfection? Manscaped's Lawnmower 4.0 is the only electric shaver that I've used that hasn't shredded my balls like an angry electric cheese grater. And that's because their advanced skin-safe technology reduces nicks and cuts to your most sensitive areas. I'm talking about your testicles, Reginald. With a cordless charging system, a handy charging indicator, 90 minutes of use out of a single charge and a sleek design, the fourth generation lawnmower has it all. And Manscaped's travel lock feature will ensure there are no embarrassing incidents at the airport. Make sweaty testicles a thing of the past with the Crop Preserver and keep yourself feeling fresh with the Crop Reviver. 
Use the Weed Whacker for those unsightly nose hairs. And thanks to its 360 degree rotary blades and skin safe technology, you can trim those nose cables with ease. Enroll in their peak hygiene plan and get ongoing refreshments of your favorite products sent straight to your door. For your best bang for buck, all in one ball care package, buy the Performance Package 4.0 and for a limited time, get two free gifts and 20% off of free international shipping in the link below today. Manscaped, because your balls are hairy and disgusting. And now, back to our main feature. It's all thanks to this thing. This is a Conbi stick, and what it does is it plugs into the USB port of your Raspberry Pi and very easily allows you to connect all of your Zigbee devices to Home Assistant directly. So this means no more requirement for an internet connection going up to the manufacturer's cloud. Everything is connected directly to this thing and into your Raspberry Pi. This solves an awful lot of problems because I've been able to connect it to an awful lot of things. And I thought this was going to be hard. I actually bought this stick back in September and immediately threw it in a drawer because I just thought to myself, everything to do with Home Assistant is a nightmare. There is no way I'm gonna plug that in and everything's just gonna work. And every time I opened that drawer, I kind of got that horrible sense of dread and slowly closed it again. Get to the part where you apologize for being wrong about Home Assistant. Let me tell you about the second seriously exciting discovery that I've found. I can now trigger Amazon routines with Home Assistant. Why aren't you getting excited? Let me explain what that means. It means that I can now control everything in Home Assistant, even if there is no integration whatsoever. My vacuum cleaner, my RoboRock vacuum cleaner, you can't get that thing controlled within Home Assistant anymore. You used to be able to, and then the company went, don't want you to do that anymore. Tough tits. I can now do it because I can trigger it via Home Assistant through Amazon Routines and then make it run. This is huge news. We'll talk shortly about exactly how I've achieved that, but first, back to the Conby stick. In order to recreate my home alarm system in Home Assistant, prove all those stupid nerds wrong about just how easy it was going to be, I decided I would use the Conby stick because I thought it would definitely provide the most amount of frustration to prove my point. It was automatically detected and installed without me doing anything. That balls up that plan. And then I found that it simply let me add every single Zigbee 3.0 device from my entire collection. I connected bulbs from Ikea. <laughs> I connected bulbs from Lidl, I connected bulbs from Akara, I connected Toya Zigbee door sensors and motion sensors, a siren, and even a vibration sensor. I connected a Philips, sorry, I connected a Philips, sorry, I connected a Philips, sorry, I connected a a bulb from the Netherlands. <laughs> and then there was this toy a key fob. I didn't stand a chance. Okay, this, this won't work. I am absolutely positive this time. It has a reset switch, but I've already heard a rumor that it doesn't work. So I'm absolutely confident this time. Add the voice, reset. <sighs> what? No. I'm just, I'm, I could do that. I could totally do that. I just I pressed a button on this thing and things happened in the Home Assistant dashboard. I didn't have to install an additional integration. I didn't have to go and alter lines of code. I pressed a button and it worked. And that is super weird because this thing is super rare. It, it came with like some kind of Zigbee security system and I can't find it anywhere. The fact that the people that made the Conby stick have coded up an integration that works with this is some kind of miracle. And the process to add these devices is just the same as any kind of consumer-based service. 
You press a button in Home Assistant to tell it to start listening, and then you put your device into pairing mode, and it's discovered. By lunchtime on day one, I had installed every single device required for this project. Bewildered at the complete lack of difficulty of any of this, I decided I would try and make a routine in Home Assistant, and I knew this would let me down. I knew this would go wrong. It didn't go wrong. Nothing went wrong. I mean, it wasn't easy to create all of those individual automations for a full-blown alarm system. It took ages. And this key fob, the button that's supposed to disable the alarm, was triggering it. Because, you know, why not? But I was able to work around that using Home Assistant's automations because they are very powerful and actually reasonably intuitive. So time for the big apology. I was right! I was I was always right! I am always right! Home Assistant is still a complete and total nightmare! Those things might be resolved, but my god, there are so many problems still to this day! The geofencing is completely to cock! One minute it thinks I'm in the house, and then it doesn't know where I am, and then when I go out of the house, I'm still at home, and then when I'm at home, I'm apparently at a swimming pool. When you utter nerds told me that it would be easy to get my home assistant instance to convince my Amazon Echo to speak, did you actually mean I would need to be good friends with Rob from the hookup? Without Rob's help, I wouldn't have stood a chance to get Home Assistant to tell my Amazon Echo to speak, because it involved creating a binary sensor by typing some gibberish into the configuration.yaml text file so that I could then create a helper to trigger that gibberish. Now that I have that information, it's really easy. I actually got this information from Rob from the hookup, I pasted it into the YAML file, and everything was great. But I spent six hours researching to try to do it without having to bother him. Six hours trying to decipher utter bollocks. Perfectly simple. All I gotta do is create a template binary sensor, map it to the input boolean, and then expose the binary sensor to an actor instead of the input boolean, you idiot. Not difficult. Let me, um, let me do that now. I mean, I wasn't wrong, was I? But with the Conby stick now in place and my newfound ability to trigger Amazon routines via Home Assistant, I too can now be a smug prick. <clears throat> Home Assistant! Home Assistant! Home Assistant! Is that one of you now? <laughs> and it's not without its problems. And this is kind of a big one for me because I hate subscriptions. But if you want to be able to connect She That Should Not Be Named or Google Home, or even be able to control the devices in your house when you're away from home using your mobile phone, you really need a subscription to their platform, Nabucasa. And that's $6 a month, which is almost the price of Netflix. And I'm saying you really need it because you can actually do it without it if you're a massive nerd. If you understand input booleans and YAML configuration files and... No thanks. I've always said that Home Assistant is awesome but time consuming, and my position on that has not changed. If you get this combi stick, it solves an awful lot of that problem. And if you learn how to get Home Assistant to start Amazon routines, it solves the other problem. I myself plan to do a very quick tutorial on how you can get Home Assistant to trigger Amazon routines. And if you're interested in the Conby stick, I'm going to link that below too, alongside a link for the Raspberry Pi starter kit that I used for this project. Don't worry if you're thinking I'm not into Home Assistant, I will still be focusing on consumer-based products too. I'm just gonna see if they work with Home Assistant alongside their own ecosystems from now on, which should hopefully excite all the Home Assistant nerds. God starts Home Assistant! If you've got the time to spend on this stuff, it really is awesome and it is finally worth it. 
And not every person out on the internet that is into Home Assistant is an angry nerd. People like Rob from The Hookup are absolutely awesome people and they will give you amazing tutorials. I'm going to link him below and also a chap called Mark Watts because I stumbled across his channel during the research for this project and he is delivering things in a way that even my stupid little brain can understand. Check those guys out in the links below. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. That'll tell YouTube's algorithms it was a good video and more people should see it. If you want to see some more of this guy, hit that subscribe button and ding that bell. If you ding the bell, it lets YouTube know that you want to be notified when I upload videos. These incredible people here are my patrons from Patreon. And without them, you wouldn't be watching this pretty face because I would have given up and just gone back to the day job. If you want to be one of those incredible people, you can do that at either Patreon or buy me a one-off beer at PayPal. And either way, I will genuinely love you forever. These are my Facebooks and my Twitters and my Instagrams and my TikToks too. Come and hang out there and we can be best friends. See you next time. Oh, <laughs> that was lucky. That could have been expensive. <laughs> All here but stuntman. Trying to sell it a little bit too much there. <laughs>